Today's lesson is about how to create a purchase order. We're all going to do that from the inventory module, and there's the, here's the item procurement and delivery. The purchase approvals was discussed in the main overview of, uh, of this particular module. Today we discuss purchasing and fulfillment and the purchase orders after that. Purchasing and fulfillment is a great way of quickly adding uh, new items to your inventory or quickly ordering the items that have been sold. When a opportunity or quote is being converted into a ticket, automatically those charges are applied on the ticket and they become uh, billable items, but also become an item that needs to be purchased when the product has been set up as needing to be purchased. In this case, there was a switch that was sold to the company Unknown Company and it's now being listed here as being needed one because on hand or reserved or available, there's all zero. So we're going to select that one by check marking the box and then we say create purchase order. We'll open up a new screen or a new tab. In this case, we have the purchase order numbers, uh, items here on the bottom. Whether it says for the unknown company as a client, you can still go back into the ticket. It's a hyperlink. It says the switch and it says the cost of $100. First thing, if you go to the top section, we need to list the vendor name. We can do that by a select box. We'll select generic vendor. And now you will see that suddenly this one pops up as yellow. By meaning it pops up as yellow doesn't know it means that the switch has not been properly associated with this generic vendor. It's most likely the first time that we uh, buy this particular switch from this vendor. And once we go through the process of buying this one, it will uh, link these two together. And next time it won't be yellow again. If you want to use a different vendor later on, even though it associated this switch with a generic vendor, you want to maybe associate it with Cisco, then you can still change the, the vendor name to Cisco. It will pop up yellow again and will make you uh, give you approval to say, okay, it's a different vendor. When clicking on this line item, you have the ability to make some changes. You can change the inventory location. Uh, you don't have to change the quantity because that's basically the quantity that's needed from the, for this particular quote. And you can change the cost. Let's say we can change it to 110. That's all what you can do. And once you're done, you can press on OK. There's a little button to that say use the description from either way the quote item or the product catalog or the charge. Maybe sometimes some people put a different uh, item on the charge with a better description. Then you have that information as being listed here as well. Um, other items that you have to fill in is not really all obligated because you can see everything's really there. Vendor invoice, you don't have it yet at this moment. You can put an external PO in there. You can list the terms, maybe due on receipt, that depending on that particular vendor. Uh, the more you fill out on the vendor really itself, the more will also really pop up here. Or the more you fill out on the switch, the more will fill out here. And then you have over here the shipping uh, location. It, uh, it says to home office. Usually that's where you ship it to. But you can also say you, you can ship it already to the particular client itself. And it's also with a drop shipment that is, that is doable. If there is a freight amount, you can also put it in here. Let's say it's 20. And you know what I have. You can also do an apply an estimated arrival date if you did already know that, but also by default, the system has been set up. Once you submit this order, it would automatically pop up. Now, if you press, press save and close, nothing will happen. The purchase order has been saved for future order, but it has not been processed and submitted. So you can't use it further in the process. You need to either way select save and submit, or you can do submit and email and or view or print the purchase order. Right now, we're going to just going to select save and submit. And we're going to have that pop up saying that, hey, this switch, is indeed a new new product. It's highlighted in yellow. Remember the one I spoke about. Do you want to associate this with this particular, particular vendor? And we're going to say yes. Now there's a new screen popping up, and that screen is for the estimated uh, arrival time. Uh, it will ask you to uh, enter a date. So we're going to select a date. Let's say it's going to be on the 6th. And we're going to say save and submit. Now this is an item that always pops up. And it's always a good practice. So in this case, you don't have to add it to the order itself. You can right away do it in the, in the other one. But if you don't really want to have it, so if you're always good with the estimated arrival time or you don't care about it, there's this box that says do not show this again. But by default, it's always good to have this one in place. Once you fill out the date, you can press save and submit. And now what happens is that this particular purchase order is now a valid purchase order. As you can see, the item has been removed from this purchasing and fulfillment list. And now if we go back to the inventory and we go to the second section where it says purchase orders, by default it shows nothing. We're going to press search. And here you can see that the purchase order that we just placed, this particular PO number has been submitted. Again, here's the handy feature where you have the column chooser. So you can add maybe a couple of more items that you want to have in there as well. That makes you, uh, is it easier to search for? 
But now you know this PO number has been uh, submitted. And now what you can do also with your vendor, you should provide them this PO number. So whenever they ship something to you or whenever they have an invoice to you, it all comes back to this PO number. And from here on, you can see it. Now from this particular uh, section, you can also make straight away a new purchase order number or a new purchase for something that you might have not in stock. First one is you have to create a vendor or select a vendor. We will call it generic vendor. It's the only one that we have in the system right now. And on the purchase order items, that's where you have to select new. And once you select new, then you have the option to select what kind of products do you want. And these are usually the items that you're going to select that you have maybe in stock that you want to keep. Let's see, we have a couple of items. Let's say we want to do the keyboard. There's no, that's just a category name. There's apparently nothing in there because it's not maybe not by the generic vendor. So we're going to unselect that one because it always wants to choose whatever it has. Let's see what we all have in there. There's not too much in this uh, system. So we're going to select then the equipment. And then again, you can say, okay, now I'm going to buy 10 of those ones for a cost of let's say 15 each. And now we have the line items. You press OK. After you press OK, then you have the option to uh, maybe put an, uh, an estimated arrival time. But in this case, it will do it when we press the, the order. We can also do submit an email. That's again, it says the, the yellow item. Market is complete. And with submit an email, what you have the option there is that you can now control if you want to make sure that you uh, email this particular item to, uh, of course, the, the estimated arrival time. One in there. Of course, we have eight. And now that one has been submitted as well. And from here, you have the options to also go again in there. So you can edit purchase order number. You can receive or cancel the receipt of the purchase order. You can view or print it, or you can even email the purchase order. That's kind of what we try to do. We'll open up a separate screen. And here you have the ability to, uh, to email your purchase order and to save it to, the, to whomever, to the vendor right away. And there's a purchase order template that's been discussed in a, in a separate section uh, or that explains you how to create a purchase order number. You have a couple of options to change that template. And you have the template being sent out to the vendor. And then the, temp the vendor has right away the products that you want to buy, the quantities, the purchase order number, very important, and all of that. Once you're done with that, then we have them both listed here. This uh, concludes everything about the PO number. Again, if you have a whole list over here, this purchase order number search, you can choose here by vendor, by PO number, even by status, uh, create date. So there's a lot of functionalities on, on how to find your purchase order numbers. Also, you can uh, choose filters, what you want to have in here. And again, you have the same kind of items at purchasing and fulfillment too. But this is just very limited on uh, just the, the items that are there. Again, there's a column chooser. Uh, you might like that you say, okay, I need to have, a, for example, the, the description. I want to have it in there. We add it in there and then we have a little bit more. See, here is a test piece of equipment, a little bit better description of what you needed to buy. I hope this uh, is conclusive on how to create a purchase order number, either way uh, from scratch or through the fulfillment, which is the best way to do it. And in another lesson, I will show you the next steps that come after it, that's the receiving. Thank you. And if you have any questions, comments, then go to our private Facebook group and leave the comments there. Thank you.